Romans, Romans 2, Romans 12, 6 through 8. He also speaks to us through diff difficult Psalms 119, 6 to 7, and 6 to 8. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. John, 4, 4, John chapter 14, verse 26. God also speaks to us. Excuse me. Speak, speak to us through his. Creation. Psalm 19, 1 through 2. But most of all, God speak through who, whoever and whomever he choose. And it, it is it, it is never a disagreement, disagreement with his word. Job 36, 33, 14. Now we need to ask, is the is there any thing that keep us from hearing God. We know that wrong attitudes restorement are unconfused things can stop us from hearing God. For example, God can tell tell you to go right, but you go left. The the way that you can hear from God is confession, confession and repentance, repentance. So if you want to keep hearing from God and keep the line of communication open, learn to do spiritual breathing. The, the way to do spiritual breathing is first, it, Exhale, you are a admitting a a a your sins to God. Next, in a, in a hole which you are relying on God to fill you by His Spirit. But remember to pray constantly asking God to please continue to communicate with you but you have to be willing to listen for me God comes to me in my sleep and I hear him I I listen to him in my sleep through a dream if I don't understand the dream I go to my leader and ask my leader to explain it to me we have to learn to listen to God. We listen to the people in the street, but we won't listen to God. I turn it over to Apostle Parker. Okay. I like how you how you left us at a cliffhanger. That's the second cliffhanger for today. I'm going to need you to go back and get every one of those scriptures that you just called out, but we didn't go to not near one of them. We don't know what the scripture yeah. itself says. Okay, I'm about to go through them. And, and we're going to go through them one by one. Okay. At the end, you drop us off at we listen to the people in the street, but we do not listen to God. That's who I know what the Bible says about that. Does anybody know what the Bible says about that? Can you tell us? Say that again, Miss Veronica. Can you please tell us? I, I, I will. I want to give somebody an opportunity to answer that first. Okay. I know got somebody it. got to know. Can you repeat the question? What does the Bible say about taking listening to the people in the street what what does the bible tell us about taking the advice from the people in the street don't do it don't do it it say we're don't not supposed to check the world's advice we're not supposed to take the world we, we're not supposed to listen to the world over the people of god but i can't think of the verse or how the bible exactly say it but i know the bible mm -hmm. does say we're not supposed to take the world advice over the people of god 
something, something like that. Take not the counsel of the ungodly. I think that's Psalms one. Exactly Amen. right. Amen. It says, take not the counsel of the ungodly. Well, what do you mean don't take the counsel of the ungodly? Don't listen to the people in the street. Mm -hmm. If they not live in what you live in, what can they tell you about your God? Nothing. Not a thing. Hallelujah. My God, that just hit right there. That hit home right there when you said that. My God, thank you. And so what it will do is breed a spirit of confusion. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Prophetess McClendon, please go to Psalms 1 for me. No, Tanisha. Tanisha, please go to Psalms 1 for me. Please, because Tanisha, Tanisha is my, 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 my professor. Okay. Thank you, Lord. That's okay. I got you. You, you, you ain't off the hook, homie. Psalms chapter one, the first division of Psalms, they say. Yes, ma'am. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Stop right there. That's how it start out. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Um, in vision, I can't ask you to imagine. I, I, I don't like when leaders ask people to imagine because the Bible tells us to cast out all imagination. Does it do that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so why would I ask you to imagine? You wouldn't do that. I, I sure wouldn't. But I would say in vision, get a vision of you listening to what the world say over what the godly people have to say. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Tanisha, go, go just a little bit, just a little bit. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Right there. Right there. So I, I don't need to listen to the ungodly and I don't need to stand in the way of sinners. How am how, my God in Jesus' name? How do we stand in the way of a sin? Standing in their presence. By standing in their presence. Uh, standing the I never thought about that. That's a good question. I honestly never thought about that. How to stand in the way of them. I just thought it meant being around them. Period. That's what I thought. Yeah. Nope. Oh, well then, oh shoot. Well, nope. well, I never read it right then. <laughs> Me either. Lesson. lesson. That, okay. Uh, thank God for good what uh -huh. you think? What you think it means? Well, I think, um, let me see. If if they decided, if to me, if they decided to walk in the wrong way, then standing in their way would be like telling them what they can do and what they can't do, telling, telling them the way, um, if they choose to live a sinful life, Telling them how to live their life godly will be standing in their way. In no, ma'am. No, no ma'am. No, ma'am. No, no, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let's look at this. I, I, let's take our time. Let's take our time. Oh, God, help us tonight. Thank you, God. The Bible says, blessed is the man that taketh not the counsel 
of the ungodly. Who are ungodly people? Let's figure that out first. Step by step. People, have not the people that Jesus don't believe. Christ, the, Lord yes, the unbelievers. Right. The, the unbelievers. The people. The mm -hmm. sinner. The, the one that's the not walking in the things of God. Alone, the yeah. one who have not confessed Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Good girl, Annie. That was a good one. Listen. How many sinners that y'all know believe that there is a God? How many sinners you know? A lot. A lot. A, a lot, lot of people say, and they call him oh. their God, right? Yeah. yeah, and yeah. they will almost have you believe that they live a Christian. No, no, no. They will almost have you believe they have a relationship with God, right? Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. But it's only by conversation they got a relationship. They're not walking. They not living. Not wa it. And their actions mm -hmm. is not. They don't live it. Mm. They don't listen. Oh God. They don't live it, they don't walk it, and they don't talk it. They don't live it, they don't walk it, they don't talk it, especially when it is not convenient. Hmm, that's the that part. Mm -hmm. When it's not convenient, when I want you to go do what I want you to go do, what you, what you always going to church you always on that prayer line you always talking about your apostle this and your pastor that and you want to go to this church and what happened i thought you had a relationship with god and you giving your money mm -hmm. <laughs> no look some of y'all are gonna never be accused of that. <laughs> oh, dang it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, let's get back over here. Let's get back over here. Don't go over there. Amen. Amen. The counsel of the ungodly. I'll listen to you. Tell me, oh, that preacher just trying to take advantage of you. Oh, they trying to brainwash you. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. It don't take all that. You hear that from church people. Yeah, I hear that from church yep. people a lot. Amen. Well, I hear it from the church people that ain't church. How about that? Because <laughs> wow. you can't tell me what it's going to take for me to get to God. Right. right. Mm -mm -mm. That's counsel from the ungodly. That's an mm -hmm. ungodly mind. Mm -mm -mm. That's the serpent in the garden talking to Eve. How about that? Mm -hmm. You won't surely die. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Eat Amen. The fruit. You won't surely die. Yeah. Oh, you won't surely go to hell. <laughs> what? The ungodly. Mm -hmm. But don't stand in the way of the sinners. Standing in the way of the sinner. Judgment. Uh 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 uh. Mm -mm. uh, -uh. Uh-uh. You know how people love to tell you? Well, why should you tell me anything when you're doing the same thing I'm doing? Oh. Pot huh? calling the kettle black. <laughs> That's the pot calling the kettle black. How dare you try to tell me that what I'm doing is wrong when you're doing the same thing I'm doing? You going to the same place I'm going. You saying the same thing I would say, and then you you got the dumb dumb look on your face. Mm. Cause yep. why you not trying to do better? And mm -hmm. see, I keep telling y'all there's a difference in somebody who's struggling in a sin and somebody who willfully sinning. Mm -hmm. Standing in the way of the sinner. So they might want to know God, but you, hypocrite, mm -hmm. mm, you, you unforgiver. You, you grudge holder, you, you backbiter, you, oh, do I need to keep going? No, we got it. You're standing in the way of the sinner. You're standing in the way. They want to get to God, but they can't because you are a blocker. You is a Christ blocker. Wow. Because you're doing the same thing they're doing, you're saying. Same you're doing thing. 
the same uh, thing. Sitting in, in the seat. seat. Sitting um, in the seat. Okay. Um, okay. You're pretending. You're pretending. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Wow. Lesson. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was a good mm -hmm. You ain't you can't win nobody because you're doing what they're doing. Mm. That's right. That's right. You can't win them because you're you're showing them that you ain't where you want them to think you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a hypocrite. That's mm. a hypocrite. Mm. Oh, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Okay. Standing in that's, the way of sinners. Mm -hmm. it, it, and at the same time being you're sinning doing all that sitting in the seat you're sinning yes ma'am at the same time yes ma'am mm -hmm. yes ma'am if they can tell you you know I, I make this profound statement and it's profound to me I'm telling you it's the most profound thing I could ever say when I talk to people I want y'all to know that I am not perfect I am a mess on the way to a masterpiece that is the most profound thing I can say to people mm -hmm. and I'm not going to call nobody's name because I'm not going to throw nobody under the bus but I often say to people I am not perfect Mm -hmm. And this one somebody had the nerve to say, well, you ain't perfect either. I said, well, hell, you just learning that. Where you been? This is telling you I'm perfect. Mm. The difference is I'm really putting forth the effort that it takes to change my behaviors. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. I'm not making excuses. That person wanted to make an excuse while they were still acting the way they were acting by telling me, oh, well, you're not perfect either. And I thought, I thought that the Amber Alert sound came off. Do, 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 emergency alert. You, you didn't know? You didn't know mm. I wasn't perfect? That mm. just was a new revelation to you? Mm. I've been asking God over 40 years, why did you call me to this when I'm jacked up like I am? That's what I've been asking. <laughs> I, you got me in a place. He said, I ain't never let you stand as a hypocrite. He said, I never put you out there. I never gave you a message that made you look like you were living your best life, sin free. He said, I will mm. make you confess even when you were my praise and worship leader. Mm. And God mm. knows, even when I was the praise and worship leader in ministry, mm. I would have to stand up and confess. Man, I confessed before the whole church and it was about... 200 or more people in church that day and I had to tell them I slept with the woman's husband. Mm -hmm. And she had done that. She would not have given her life to Christ that day. But some of us ain't gonna go to church and tell that. Mm -hmm. Standing in the way of a sinner. Mm -hmm. Standing in the way of sinners. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to ask for forgiveness in front of people, especially about something that that all, I know that lady went home and, and, and I'm, I had to have had a nervous breakdown. Had to have. Because mm -hmm. I told her, I said, listen, he here. You ain't bought nothing here and you ain't going to tear up nothing, but you can see him. But when you leave, he ain't leaving. Now, that sounds like me being braggadocious. I was a fool with two feet. Hmm. Did she see her husband in my bed and he didn't have no clothes on? She said, you're not even naked at home. And I said, girl, look at you and look at me. Hmm. I'm a fool. I'm a fool, y'all. But I bet you that day God told me, stand up and repent. Stand up and confess in front of all these people. I said, God, all these people 
all these people up in here? He said, what? I said, I already repented one time. I already asked him to forgive me one time. He said, do it again. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. okay. I said, okay. And, and I began to sing a song. And as I sung, I was walking towards her. And when I got to where I needed to be in the song, I began to talk to her. And I told her how wrong I was for hurting her. How wrong I was for almost seeming like I had the right to do what I did when I didn't have the right to that. That was mm. her husband. Mm -hmm. mm. And when I was done and I sincerely poured it all out before God and man, my apostle was standing behind me and that thing was blood red. He turned blood red. I swear all the blood in his body went to his face. Mm. And as I embraced that lady, and as she embraced me with tears in her eyes, she said, I asked God for a sign. Mm. She said, and had you not done what you did, I would not be doing what I'm getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. She said, and today, I know that the God in you is real. And I want to serve your God. Mm. Mm. And all I could do was cry. Mm. Amen. Wow. All I could do was cry. Because my ugly, nasty, ungodly, uncircumcised mind. And that was years. Listen, I'm telling you, I did that years, years prior to her coming to my church that day. Years. And years when I did it, I asked for forgiveness. And that was the first time that woman ever came to my church. Years later. Mm -hmm. Years later. When she asked to give her life to the Lord, I turned to my apostle and I extended my hand because what I know is I didn't have the right to lead her to Christ. That's my apostle's church. Now I could have stood in the way. I could have let pride make me stand in the way of a sinner. Mm -hmm. But that day, God won. Y'all, y'all too quiet for me. Okay, come on, I'm right there with you. Come on, I know. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I, I'm waiting for the next sentence. I'm engaged. <laughs> yeah. There, right there there's, there's, there's a humility that should come from the body of Christ. Yeah. When you know that you've done wrong, let me tell you something. I got to brought tears don't ever move Amen. me. Mm. Tears yes. don't move me. Go there. Because I got a brother that can cry on command. That boy can cry mm. like he's turning on a water speaker. Mm. All you got to do is say, um, I'm mad. And he wants something. Oh, I'm so sorry. And he can outcry river. Mm. And ain't bit more sorry than a man in the moon. Mm. But he know that with women, women like a crying man. <laughs> oh, y'all. Yeah. Yes, sir. We, we want to think that they the most sincere individuals in the world. No, them demons know what they do. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah, amen. So I'm not moved when people start all that bunch of crying. Mm -hmm. Because everybody can cry. Mm -hmm. But can everybody be sincere? Mm 
because I mm -hmm. should see the fruit of your tears in action. Uh oh. That's right. Uh oh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Right. You ought not cry the cover out, blow up all the whole box of clinics, take down the whole roll of paper towel or, or, or tissue. Stop. And you still the same nasty individual. Ain't nothing about your inside change. Self mm. you got less mucus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Give it a little while. There'll be another Amen. mucus build up. Mm. Why? Because you're not sincere. Mm -hmm. So your tears don't mean nothing to me, and they don't mean nothing to God. Now, when you get for real, for real, God will know. Oh, God will know. Mm -hmm. I got a video of a man who gave his life to God. And in him giving his life to God, he had a conversation with the devil. And he told the devil, F you for effing up my life. And all I could do was lift my hands. I almost broke my phone today. <laughs> I got that video. I'm going to keep it for the rest of my days. He didn't say F the letter. Boy, he said the real word. Mm. And people were like in church looking around. And, I, and, and thank God it was my church. I said, go ahead, baby, and get free. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and get free. You tell the devil how you mad. Because as long as you ain't mad, you ain't going to change. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not tired of the devil, you're not going to change. Standing in the way of the sinner. Sitting in the seat of the scornful. Mm. Taking the counsel of the ungodly. They don't want to see you walk away from sin. You might be a good hanging partner. You might be you might be the one to burn the dance floor up. You might be the one that can can look can can do the cupid shuffle and 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 the bank head bounce and all those different whatever dances. Girl, look, I ain't danced in so long. I, mm -mm -mm. But, you might be the good one. You might be the life of the party. You might be the one that everybody like talking to and laughing with. You might be the one that's good for the good shopping trip. You might be the one, whatever it is that you do that the world, that you did for the world. You think they want to say, they want to see you say goodbye? Mm. Y'all, nope. y'all, y'all nope. don't want to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Nope, they don't want to see nobody say goodbye. Come on. They don't, they want they you. don't because you, you're going to make a difference one way or the other. Maybe you're going to make the difference in them coming out of where they are. Or, they, or you're going to make the difference in them staying where they are. Uh-oh. 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 Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. yeah. People change when they see change. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Cool. Amen. If they see you no longer going to the club, no longer at the bar, no longer on the stripper pole, no longer in Tom, Dick, and Harry's face saying Tom's dick is Harry. Come on. When they see that you not out cussing the sailor, when they see your life changed, they're going to do one or two things. They're going to distance themselves from you because they know that you're sincere or, or they're going to start talking to you, waiting for you to stop and go back to what you were doing with them. Why? Tell me why. 
because <laughs> your change will make them uncomfortable. Like when they start seeing you do the right thing, that make them feel guilty for them not doing the right thing. And they feel better if you're doing the wrong thing still with them than to, to make them, it's like you touching they, they guilty conscience maybe. Is that what mm-hmm. it is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anybody else got an idea? Well, if you if you're going in to try to change someone's life and and be a light in their life, and you're doing the same thing that you used to do with that person together, then that's the same thing that you're doing. You're not changing anything, so nothing's changing. You're just being a partner with them, and it's hypocritical because you're 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 not really being the true person that you should be to change that person and make a difference in that person's life. When a person when a person see that you have changed um that you're not drinking or partying with them, they become uncomfortable with you. And so they yes. wouldn't want to hang out with you anymore. They distance, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the change that should take place. Because and if yep. you continue to do the same thing with them, they're not going to see a change in you. So they're going to still be comfortable. And, and you're still going to do the same thing and, and lie to God and lie to yourself and just not walk godly. So people, places, and things, um, I, I try to practice um, with my walk with God because, you know, people can change your thoughts, your actions, and things that you say and do. So if I, if I walk with those that do the same thing and has the same interest that I have and the same love for God that I have, I, I, I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more safe that I'm going to, that I'm going to reach my goal. And I'm not going to step back. I'd rather step back on my own accord than following someone else. Do, do me a favor and look at your hands. Look at your hands. Okay. All of us? Huh? All of us? Or just... Yeah, everybody. Look at your hands. I'm looking. Yeah. All right, I'm looking at my hands. How many people life have you damaged? Can you see it in your hand? How many people life have you have you done damage to because of the way you live? Mm. Mm. Think of one. That's one too many. <laughs> You don't think so? Yes, ma'am. You don't think that's one too many? Yes, ma'am. That is. Because you're now accountable for that life that you have damaged. Mm -hmm. And if you never go back and fix it, if you never go back to the person that you damaged, by the things you did or by the things you said or by the way you lived in front of them or by the way you presented your your our false representative always do us for lulu mm -hmm. and some people are very comfortable with their false representative so much so that they live in their false representative instead of their true self. Yeah. Amen. So if I damage you, even in my false representative, it's my hands. It's my hands that's dirty. Not the false representative. Yeah. So, so tonight, Tamika said, when God is talking to you, are you listening? Are you listening? No. Are you are you really trying to make sure God knows that you understand what he's saying to you? Mm. 
I try, but if I don't understand, I come to ask my leader to help me understand it. What if? What if God don't want you to go to your leader? What if he, he want you to have real dialogue with him? You have to sit there and figure it out. I ask, him, I ask God to help you with it. You got to talk to him. You got to say, God, you know, I don't know. I don't know about this. Let me tell y'all something. I remember this lady prophesied to me. I don't know if I shared this with y'all before or not. But I try to teach people that God talks to us in a language that we understand. So this lady prophesied to me. She said, God said he's going to bless you with stacks on stacks on stacks on deck. And I said, huh? What the hell is that? God, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't speak straight. So I don't know what that is. And I didn't want to say that it wasn't God. And I'll never say it wasn't God. But I just knew that I needed somebody to translate street for me because that was street and I don't speak street. So I went to my daughter and I said, hey, this woman of God spoke a word into my life. I don't understand it. I said, because I don't speak street. She said, what she say? I said, she said, God said he was going to bless me with stacks on stacks on stacks on deck. She started laughing. She said, my, you should have went up and prayed. I said, oh, I told God, thank you. But I asked him, what the hell is that? Because I don't know what it is. <laughs> I did, sister. I did. You're supposed to ask. I, I, God, I don't know what the hell that is. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that language. And I can't tell you what that means. So then my daughter said, Mom, you seen how Mayweather have all that money on his dining room table, that brown table? I said, yep. Yeah. She said how he sit there with his feet propped up at all that money on the table. She said, that's stacks on that. But she said stacks on stacks on stacks on that. I said, oh, well, praise God. I did say praise God because then I understood, but I didn't understand. And so then I didn't want to get comfortable because I, I didn't know if my daughter, listen to me, I didn't know if my daughter was just telling me what she wanted me to hear or what she wanted me to think it meant. So I asked another woman of God who's kind of hoodish. <laughs> And she said, girl, that's more money than you can spend. Stacks on stacks on stacks. And then she went right back to the same scenario my daughter gave. And I knew God had to been talking to me because I'm a Floyd Mayweather fan. You want to talk to me about an undisputed boxer? Undefeated? Talk to me about Floyd. Talk to me about his principle. Talk to me about the fact that, that he don't trust nobody to fight him dirty. Talk to me about that. He said, ain't nobody going to beat me because they're high on steroids. Fight me because you're a good fighter. Beat me because you're a good fighter. Not because you're dirty. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have major respect for Floyd Mayweather. Now, folk don't like him because he's a young, black, arrogant dude. But guess what? He undefeated. He mm -hmm. retired undefeated. What is your life going to do when you run into people that need to get to God, but you doing what they're doing? What you going to do? Look at your hands. Are my hands clean? Is my hands and my mouth and my heart in alignment, in agreement? 
Tanisha was praying this morning and she asked God to bless people's hands and the works of their hand and what they put their hands to do. Don't nobody want their hands clean and dirty at the same time. Mm -mm. They either going to be clean or they're going to be dirty. EJ and Rain love Cheetos. The minute their hands get dirty, they got to stop eating and go wash their hands. That don't make no sense because they're going to come right back to them Cheetos. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Amen. Clean your hands. If you look at your hands and you say, you know what, God, I, I've done some damage. My hand's not clean in your presence. Mm. I can't lift up holy hands because my hand's not clean. So that's why I said it ain't good, Tasha. When you can, when you quickly can say at least one. Actually, I just thought of another one too. As I looked at my hands, I thought of another one. Got to fix it. You got to fix it. Yeah, I got to fix it. God, I thank you. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God when he speak to you through his servants? Even when you don't like what they say? Yes, ma'am. I remember I didn't like something that was said to me. But I knew I needed something from God. And my apostle was in another pastor's church and he said to me, he said, you got some in your house that's going to separate you from God. And I kept saying, what is that? What in the world could I have in my house that's going to separate me from God? And I, couldn't get my mind right. I couldn't get my mind wrapped around what I would have in my house that would separate me from God. Cause honey, it wasn't nobody coming through in the morning. It wasn't nobody coming through at lunchtime. So wasn't nobody cuddling at night. It wasn't none of that. It wasn't none of that. I was living straight up before God. I, I, I wasn't playing no games. So to hear that being said over the pulpit, and he didn't call me to the side. He didn't whisper it in my ear. He said it so the people in the church could look at me and they could wonder, what the devil she got going on? And see, to know me is to know that I am finicky about how folk think about my walk with God. Certain things you just can't say to me about my walk with God and think that I'm just going to let it ride because I'm not. And on my way home that night, I went to war. God, first of all, I need you to know I love you. And so when I get home, I, everything in the house going in the front yard. And if you don't tell me it could come back in, it won't be in my house. <laughs> the chair in the cheering bed, I don't, I don't care what it is. See, that's what he mean to me. He mean enough to me that I'm going to fix it. So when he said there was something going to come between me and God in my house, he could have said you disobedient or you rebellious or you stubborn or, 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 or anything. But a thing, a thing going to come between me and God? Heck no. Not no thing.
at the end of that night, before I went to sleep, I had received the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, that was the, the best night of my life. I had to go through all of that to receive the Holy Ghost, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation, the gift of intercession. Come on here that night. I That night, God blessed my life because he knew I wanted him more than I wanted anything. Yes. Yes, God. What do you want more than anything? When God talking to you, are you willing to let go of the world to get to God? Are you willing to make the world a liar to get to God? What is it that you put before God? What is it? Is he talking and you just not listening? Is he talking and you don't understand what he's saying? How many of you can say that God be talking to you and you don't understand what he's saying? Who going to tell me that? Tamika got her hand up. Veronica got her hand up. And then I'm going to tell y'all to go to James. And he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he will give it to him liberally and upbraideth it not. I'll give you the wisdom you need to discern, to discern me. I'll give you what you need, but you got to give me something to work with. Are you just saying it? But you really not trying to walk away. You really not trying to lay aside every weight and everything. You really not trying. You think it's okay to be social. Some things are not good. It's permissible, but it's not beneficial. <laughs> Apostle Lily and I. Say that again, baby. James chapter one. Mm -hmm. so Apostle first, Lily and I were talking on yesterday. She came to see me. No, 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 no. Not yesterday. She did come over here yesterday. But the day before, she came over. And she sat and we talked. And we were talking about things that we like to do. And I told her, I said, I still listen to smooth R&B. I still listen to jazz. I still will listen to some rap every now and again when I need to be hyped and get myself in a crunk kind of position. But if you really want to move me, let's get some worship going. I'm a worshiper. I said, but I listen to all genres of music. They don't move me away from God. So then we started talking about leaders who socially drink. Do you socially drink? The answer is no. I do not socially drink. Will I have a glass of wine? Hmm. Every now and again. More again than now. Why? I came to the deductive reasoning that my father was an alcoholic. And I did not want to be an alcoholic because my father was an alcoholic. Alcoholism ran through my father's bloodline. Every one of his brothers were alcoholics. Every one of them jokers had awesome calls on their life. But they were alcoholics. They were the ones standing in the way of the sinners. Could preach you under the bench. Drunk nonetheless. So who, who going to convert? Who going to convert for somebody who's a uh, drunk? I said, I got to be careful. When I met 
Bishop and them, they asked me, hey, do you drink? And I'm not talking about Bishop Gordon or Bishop Robinson. I'm talking about some big name bishops. And they asked me, do I drink? Um, I said, no. They asked me, would I be offended if they had a drink while I was with them? No, that's your life. That's your business. not offended and i never looked at them quote unquote different but i wondered if i would have said it offended me would they have had that glass of something to drink anyway because i know that some people don't care who watch them do what they do well, I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. So you ain't finna brand me with nothing crazy. And you ain't finna put me out there on front street. Because you call yourself mad. Now, I think. Everybody on the line, except for Miss Veronica, have been with me in a setting where we were where we were relaxed, and I and I had a glass of wine. I didn't ask. I asked, would it offend? I did not. I would not have done it had it offended. But even before I prayed, I asked God, God, why are you asking me to do this? Because I normally would not even have had, had a drink of wine around anybody. But he wanted to prove something to me and he did. Are we, are we in our life in a place where we can say, okay, God, I am depending on you to lead me where I need to go and I'm willing to do, do the work. Are you willing to do the work or are you just talking like you're willing to do the work but not really willing to make the commitment of doing the work? Now that sound like a lot, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. But it's not. It's easier than you know. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. I make up my mind every day whether I'm going to do right or whether I'm going to do wrong. I make up my mind that I'm not going to walk around here and my heart be bitter, full of the devil full of stuff that does not give God glory, full of stuff that will not promote life and godliness. I'm not going to get cankered up and want to be able to pray, want to be able to read, want to be able to study, and I can't because I got too much on my heart. So I make a decision every day. God, today is the day I need you to be God. I need you to deal with everything. I need you to show me what I need to do. I need to teach me. I need you to teach me what to say and how to say it so that you get the glory. After you get the glory, I'm satisfied. Don't let me be a glory stealer. Don't let me steal your glory. And every day after I make that decision, I do my best to live by that decision. Is it always easy? No. There are days when people will provoke you and you'll find yourself because somebody all the way out and they will have earned it, but you will still be wrong. Yep, like that one. I heard you. <laughs> I heard you, girl. Mm-hmm. It don't make it right. It won't make it right. It won't make it right. 
but we can still talk things out like if there's a problem we could talk it out we just don't need to cuss them out is that a good way to put it that's a good way to do that mm -hmm. and see you who ain't a cusser that wouldn't be a challenge but you who is a liar that's a challenge because you will tell them mm -hmm. your fake truth and not the whole truth uh-oh right did yes, i call you a liar in front of everybody i yes, sure did, did. Mm -hmm. you tell the truth because i you're alive right now with your teeth and your tongue yeah amen so the challenge for you would be telling the truth and being able to not judge and hold on when they tell you the truth that come back for you because yeah. the minute they tell you something about you they going to hell yeah I get pretty mad. people don't know that about you i do i can tell you yes ma'am Oh, yeah, you going to hell. God is not pleased with you. <laughs> oh. Listen, that girl goes through the whole tangent then. And next thing you know, you'll be thinking you're talking to her. And, and she be the, she be done blocked out every word you said. You you be done spit your whole guts and she ain't heard nothing you had to say. Because she done mm. put you on ignore in her own mind. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. instead of being able to deal with it and reason one with the other and 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 and, and don't let them blow smoke up your butt and you don't blow none up theirs mm -hmm. yeah i learned to do that The decision is saying, okay, God, I know that I'm being tried right now. I know that the enemy is pushing my buttons because he don't want me to surrender to God. I know that he is trying to get me in a place where I'm not able to walk in clarity or walk in peace in where you're calling me i want to i want to go out and i want to laugh and i want to have a good time with people let me tell you sometimes the best thing to do in your beginning walk with god is just disassemble yourself from people places and things and stay that way until god give you the ability to walk back There may be some people that God would say to you, listen, you can have a glass of wine, but don't have it around this person. They wouldn't be able to handle you having that glass of wine. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people think about me. I want my glass of wine. Well, see, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You got to care. Mm -hmm. You got to care what people think, especially if God call you to ministry. Amen. You got to care. Yep. I need help. You got to care how what you're doing affects other people. Mm -hmm. You got to care. Amen. Mm. Well, that's just too much responsibility. And that gives them too much power over my life. I need to live my life. And okay. Mm. Then you stay right where you at, baby. But until you're willing, Jesus became a servant. And he was the son of God. He made himself the lowest thing on the totem pole. Do you really want to hear what God got to say to you? Do you really want to grow in the things of God? Do you really want to let go of the way you handle situations, places, people, things? Do you really want God to, to see 
you for who you are? Do you? He already know. He already know. Some people cannot handle the truth. Some people can't handle the truth. Amen. Amen. So you tell them the truth about themselves. They're going to be all kinds of things. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You tell them the truth about they still, and they're going to think, oh, my God, why are they coming after me? I'm just pointing out. I'm just telling you. Some things God just want you to make a decision. Are you really going to listen to me? He said, my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. Then he says, the moment you hear my voice, Harden not your heart. Why would he say that? Why would he say that to you? Does he love us? He want us to do better? Mm, no. Mm -mm. I don't think that's it. He want us to pay attention to what he's saying to us. Why? Because we don't want to do what he wants us to do. He said, harden not your heart. He yeah. said, the moment you hear me, harden not your heart. Don't, don't, get, don't get upset with me when I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. Don't mm -hmm. get mad. I mm -hmm. love you. I don't want to see you die. I don't want to see you go through unnecessary hell. I don't want to see you take yourself down that road. I love you. I love you. The moment you hear my voice, the moment you hear me, harden not your heart. But your heart is hard. Mm -hmm. you, you're stubborn. You're set in your ways. And your way is right. But what does God say about that? What does God say about your way being right? Their ways is not always right. In God's mm -hmm. eyes. And it will. Yes. Their Every ways man. like this way. Every man thinks he's right in his own eyes. Right. A free man with his own eyes think that his way is right. But then he told us, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. As far as the east is from the west. Mm -hmm. But I'm set in my way. And nobody can tell me nothing because I know I know all of this. I've been doing this for a long time, and that's the problem. That's the problem. If your way was working, don't you know you wouldn't still be having the same problem? That's right. You like that foolishness. You like it or else you would do something different. Every time people tell me I'm tired. No, you ain't. You're not tired. When you get tired, you'll do something different. When you're tired, you'll make a better decision.
Blessed is the man. <laughs> that do what? Taketh not the counsel of the ungodly. So it means if, if you understand what he's saying, blessed are you when you're listening not to people who are not living nothing. When you can say, uh-uh, you're not living right, there's nothing you can tell me. Mm -hmm. He said the blind can't lead the blind. Both of them going to fall in the ditch. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. That's right. How can somebody who not living nothing, they blind to the truth, tell you how to live a godly life? And you know, and you will know the truth. And the truth will do what? Make you free. Make you free. The truth will make you free. So why am I not free? Because I don't want to know the truth. I heard the truth. I didn't want to believe that was true. Oh, you can't tell me that. Tasha said, I don't care what you say. I ain't, I ain't selfish. I said, okay. <laughs> I don't care what you say. You is selfish. Mm -hmm. And I started proving it to her. God proved she ain't got it yet. She still ain't got it. 16 years almost. August of this year will be 16 years that girl been in my life. Wow. August will be 16 years. She been thinking she right and she still ain't got it right yet. And some things, oh yeah, she's better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But when it comes to her to her treating people the way she want to be treated. Oh no, you can kick rocks. <laughs> mm -hmm. You 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 better pray for the angels to, da to take her up so she don't dash her foot against the stone. That's what you better hope for. Mm. Because she's set in her way. She's set in her way. And no matter how much I talk to her, no matter how many examples I try to show her, no matter how many living examples, I don't care how many times I call and say, listen, I need you to see this from this way or that way or the other way. Or listen, I want you to, I want you to think about this. Oh, listen, that girl will cry me every oh, God, I'm sorry. Mama, I didn't. Oh, oh. Shut up. Shut up. I don't know when you're serious. Mm -hmm. I really want to do God's work. I really want God to use me. Shut up. He uses asses every day. You just want to use. My good prophetess McClendon, I said, you're an ass. You're an ass. You're an ass. Oh, no, no, ass. <laughs> That's why I say you're an, ass. <laughs> you're an ass. You're stubborn. You're set in your ways. You are an ass. <laughs> and I said and I was. <laughs> she kept telling me she wasn't. And the more she told me she wasn't, the more I kept giving her reasons to you know you're an ass. <laughs> and at the end of it, she said, I'm an ass. I'm so good. Why? Because we don't want to see ourselves as something like that yeah something negative yeah i don't want to believe that that i've been with god this long and god ain't told me how, how stubborn i am and ass stubborn spirit that's exactly right mm -hmm. stubbornness is as unto idolatry rebellion is as unto witchcraft mm -hmm. stubbornness means you have another god on board 
you don't want to see it. You think that you're serving God with your whole heart. I'm still mm -hmm. talking about when God talking to us. I promise mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But what happens when we're not listening? What happens when we don't want to hear what God got to say to us? What happens when we think we know better than God know? Catastrophe. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Y'all was crazy. There ain't no way in the world I could be miserable and blame God for my misery. There's no way. It's me. I'm in the way. How come God can't fix it? Because I'm in the way. I'm standing in the way of the sinner. I'm going to make them hear my point. I'm going to make them understand me. Okay. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be planted like a tree by the rivers of water. And his leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth prospers. Are you prospering in that hatefulness? Are you winning anybody? Are you winning them listening to the sinner? Are you winning them being nasty and vicious? Miss Veronica, you ain't talking to me. I'm trying to talk to somebody who want to talk to me. You're not talking to me. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. Are we winning anybody? No. 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 Is somebody winning us? Yes. 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 The world wins you when you do it the world's way. And that's when the scripture come in. You can't have two masters. You're going to love one and what? Or hate, hate the other. other. Hate the other. And the one I hate is the one that I'm not going to do what he want me to do. Mm. And I don't want to see it that way, but that's the truth. Yeah. The opposite. Uh, I love God. No, you hate him. Really, you do. Because you're doing everything that he's telling you not to do. Two masters. He talking, but you're not listening. Because you're going to out-talk him. He talking. But you're not taking in what he's saying. I, I want you. That's what he's saying. I want you. Do you want me? You want me enough that you'll you'll stop holding on to them grudges? You want me enough you'll stop lying on me? You you want me enough that you'll stop chasing the fairies and 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 and, and the and the witchery and the warlocks and you you'll stop all this soothsaying and divinating with your mouth and your mind? Oh my, let's not go there. I I I I, I won't go there. I won't. I won't go there. Mm -hmm. I know somebody was crazy enough to tell me. Um, no, nah, I ain't going to go there. I ain't going to go there. Somebody was crazy enough to tell me, I'm a warlock. I said, you a fool. You ain't got enough power to, to blow a cat in a canal. What kind of foolishness is that? What kind of foolishness is we, what kind of foolishness are we entertaining when God is trying to talk to us? Oh, because the vessel, 
You don't want to hear it because it's not coming from who you want it to come from. Might not be good for it to come from where you want it to come from. When I separate myself from people, I have good reason for doing it. Most of the time, I will have given them plenty of opportunity to get what's wrong right before I separate myself. But you don't get to lie on God. You don't get to lie on me. You don't get to cause confusion. The Bible says he that so of discord is an abomination unto God. You, you don't get to sow discord. You're not gonna you're not gonna be the stigma or the stench that make God think I'm connected to that foolishness that you're doing. And then I need to get to God and I can't because I'm connected to you. I tell people out the gate, I don't like liars and I don't like thieves. Everybody that know me know they don't heard it. I have what I call the art of goodbye. And when I say goodbye, I say goodbye for real. My goodbye game is tight. <laughs> and when you get on the other side of my goodbye game, coming back to a hello, ain't something you really think you can do easy. No, not holding no grudge. No, I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not. But I'm protecting my soul. I'm protecting my spirit, man. Because what I let go in this temple, it ain't what go in a man that defile them. Right? That's right. That's come out. But it's what come out of me that'll defile me, right? Right. All right. So if I allow you to provoke me and provoke me and provoke me until I respond to your provocation, what's going to happen? Then the ugly going to come out. It's going to come out. And most of the time, if you allow people to speak into your ear and you know they are liars, and, and the words the Bible says, and the words that I speak unto you, somebody say this with me, and the words I speak unto you, and the words I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are spirit, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are spirit, they are spirit. They are spirit. and they are life, and they are life, and they are life. Okay, now listen to what I'm going to tell you. When you are now preaching, please meet your phones. When you allow people to speak into your ear and they are liars, those lies go into your spirit. When you start talking, guess what you get ready to start doing? Lying. 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 Because they're in your spirit. They took on a place and they began to live. And you could be the most honest person. Here I go, another example. One of my leaders, I serve my leaders. I serve my leaders hard. I serve my leaders hard. So here go my leader. I'm making sure that when I go to the grocery store to buy grocery for me and my children, I bought grocery for my leader so that my leader didn't have to worry about worrying about how she was going to eat or how she was going to um, be, if she was going to be okay. When she was fasting, I knew she was fasting. When when my leader went to her refrigerator, my leader didn't have to worry about me buying her stuff that she didn't like. If she did not eat tuna of the sea, then she didn't get tuna of the sea. If she was a bumblebee girl, she got bumblebee. Whatever it was she ate. She did not eat chicken with bones. She ate boneless, skinless breasts. And when I went to the store, I bought boneless, skinless breasts, Tyson's, because that's what she would buy for herself. I didn't buy her the no frills stuff. 
I didn't buy her stuff that didn't have a name on it because when she went to the store for herself, I bought, she would buy for herself. Now, let me make my point. One day I told my leader, I said, you know, I, I, I said, something ain't right. I said, and I really need to talk to you because something is not right. She said, well, baby doll, what's the matter? I said, I noticed that I started lying. And I ain't no liar because I hate liars and I hate thieves. I said, but since I've been serving you, <laughs> you see what I did? I called it to the rug. Since I've yeah. been serving you, I noticed that lies just come. I said, and I don't know, I don't want to say that you have a lying spirit. But what I'm going to tell you is that there's lies flowing from you because you are the only one that's speaking in my ear gate. I said, and, and I want to let you know that when I catch you lying, I'm going to call you to the carpet on it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to come into agreement with your lies. I'm not going, I'm not going to pass on information that registers in my spirit as a lie without saying pastor said because mm -hmm. I do not want me to be a liar because of you. She said, baby, I'll pray. I said, okay, thank you for permission. So I began to pray. Her and her husband had been divorced for some years. She still was sleeping with her husband. Her husband went on with his life with somebody else. What come out of a man going to the woman? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, somebody. And so uh -oh. all of a sudden, she get the dumb, dumb look. Don't get the dumb, dumb look with me. You told me I could pray. This is the truth. You sleeping with him? He a liar because he lied to you telling he going to leave that woman and y'all going to get back together and y'all going to get married again. I said, God ain't no liar. The Holy Ghost in me ain't no liar. I said, am I telling you the truth? And she start crying. So we deal with that. She did learn. Stop playing with a pro with prophetess Parker because I was just a prophet then. So then one more day came and something else came up and 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 I had told her. I said, Pastor, I said, there's something that that you're not doing that you need to be doing. I said, and God is trying to reveal something to you. I said, please don't make God tear your computer up. We thinking our pastor studying to give us the message, and our pastor was copying messages from the internet. Is that the truth or is that a lie? If if it's not something that comes from the vessel, is that the truth or is it a lie? It's a lie. A lie. A lie. It's a lie. She didn't study. She copied it from the internet. And it's okay if that's where y'all at. Guess what? I ain't deceived. I know. I ain't ignorant. But you'll never grow cheating yourself. You'll never get to where God wants you to be cheating yourself. Lying to yourself. And all those things sound good. But if it ain't what you labored for, you can't get anointed reading somebody else's stuff. You don't cultivate the spirit of truth reading somebody else's stuff and taking it as though it's yours. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, study to show yourself approval unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing word of truth. Mm -hmm. 
But if I didn't study, all I did was copy and paste. Oh, I read that. Oh, good. I'll take that. Nobody will know. Hello. God know. The Holy Ghost know. Mm -hmm. God's spirit. You can't get nothing past God's spirit. So when I called my leader to the rug, I didn't call her because I was being vicious or because I, I was trying to be nasty. I call her to the rug because what? It's my soul. It is my soul. And I was never vicious. I was never nasty. I didn't never put her on blast in front of people. It was always me and her. And then I would tell her, this is your second warning. Your next morning, I'm going to have to bring you before the church. Because you ain't trying to do right. Or either I'm going to leave, whichever one God allow. Baby doll, you can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere. Who going to run these demons up out of here? Who going to cast out these demons? Who going to lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Who going to go out there and minister in the street and people come in the house of God? Oh, you know what you got in me? The Bible says sheep beget sheep. I said, well, that's why the church ain't grow because we ain't got no sheep that's growing. <laughs> ain't nobody, ain't nobody bringing nobody in. I guess they don't trust me as the pastor. Sheep beget sheep. Not the pastor go get no sheep. I told my pastor, I said, on Saturdays, I go out and I witness. Is that okay? Yes. This is what I do. This is how I do it. And it, it okay, baby, go ahead. On Friday, we start fasting, me and my team. And when we hit the street on Saturday morning, we don't ever know where God going to take us. I think that was the best time of my life. People ain't evangelizing no more. People not doing street ministry no more. Because they want to be inside the building. They want to be comfortable. Is God talking to you? Is God talking to you? Do you hear him? Are you responding to him? Sometimes you have to make a decision. Am I going to stay the way I am? Or am I going to let God have complete control over me? 